Welcome to Master Chef's Raccoon Cooking. <laughs> we are going to show you quick and fast how to make the very best raccoon bait for trapping and live trapping urban raccoons. We are in raccoon birthing season and the females are looking for a ton of calories. They've got young, they've had young, they're nursing, and so they need a lot of high fats. If you guys want to hear a whole lot of talkie talkie, then check out our other very popular raccoon making bait, raccoon bait making. Link is down in the description. Check it out. But for now, we're going to do this super quick. First thing you need is bacon. The next thing you need is a good pot. I like the pots that have a little pour on the side. And also I like a lid that's porous so that the steam will come out and you won't get burned. You need a nice sharp knife well, so that you can pretty. cut the bacon. This was a Christmas gift, 2021. You need a few jars of any size, and then you just need a really cheap dog, dog food. This just happened to be the cheapest that was available at the time. The steps to making this are, cut the bacon up into very small, usable, rendering size pieces. Take the dog food, pour it into the jars. Heat the jars up in the microwave so that when you pour the hot grease in the jar, the jar doesn't break. And then once the bacon is rendered, you pour it into the jars over the top of the dog food. Done. So I like to cut the bacon into pieces about like this because I intend very much to eat all this bacon. And I might eat it all today. You can also buy the really, really cheap bacon that's called ends and pieces. And it's already cut up into little small pieces and parts but you're basically going to boil your bacon until your bacon is golden brown and floating. And that's when you know you've got it rendered down far enough. Oh yeah. So you know, you know what I think would be an awesome video to make is let's do a urban survival video where we do a roadkill road trip. Like the only thing we eat is just roadkill that we find on the side of the road as we're traveling. We could head out west, we could eat some porcupine, probably find a dead uh, elk somewhere. I, I think we could survive pretty well. Dreams come true. Sometimes you gotta do things that are entertaining. There's two reasons why you wanna use dog food. Raccoons are very used to eating dry dog food, but dry dog food has a lot of corn in it. As a matter of fact, if we look at the ingredients on this, number one ingredient, whole grain corn. Everybody making their making their dogs into vegan dogs. The reason why you have to use glass jars or some type of metal can is because you need to pour the grease in while it's hot or still pretty warm and you'll melt most plastic containers. Now you could make it in the pot and pour the dog food in the pot with the grease, let it cool a little bit and then scoop it into plastic containers. That is a possibility. One of the other things I do is put the glass jars around the burner just to kind of warm them up. You do want to make baits that are specific to the animals. Like for instance, um, you know, groundhogs would not eat this. Squirrels would not eat this. Porcupines would not eat this. Man, groundhogs are so picky about what they eat. I couldn't even guess what a groundhog eats. Uh, well, I'll give you a hint. Cantaloupe. They love cantaloupe. So in the old days, this is how people rendered lard for cooking and for making soap. If you were to take this bacon grease, of course they wouldn't use the bacon grease, they would use beef grease um, with a little pork grease mis mixed in it. But you take this and mix in a bunch of lye and a little bit of uh, ash from a fire and you have an excellent soap to wash with. So I'm all about recycle, reuse. Most of the things that I try to do, I try to do with purpose. And since we are completely keto right now, as of today, I, I messed up over the holidays and ate some cheesecake. We're gonna take this grease, separate all the edible bacon out of it, and then we're gonna let this cool off just a little bit more. I've never wanted to eat dog food more in my life than right now. Doesn't it smell incredible? I mean, I've never wanted to eat dog food, but I promise you, in a post-apocalyptic world, when the North Korean zombies attack, and this is all we have to eat, this is how I'm going to prepare my dog food. I'd be lying if I didn't say I tried one of those vegan bacon strips. Oh, I've... <laughs> Between now and my childhood, I've eaten plenty of dog food. <laughs> Good, I'm glad we're on the same page. You know, one of the nice things whenever you screw this lid on is that you do it while it's hot, 
shake it up a little bit and as it cools the the air inside of it will um compress what's it called um when it cools down yeah yeah the air <laughs> The air uh, retracts, Suction. compresses. It creates a vacuum. Okay. And so it will seal your jar. And you can keep this stuff like this forever. So I try not to have a whole lot of liquid in the jar. Like I want just enough to coat all the dog food, but I don't want a lot of liquid left over because it kind of it's hard to scrape the last bit of it out of the bottom of the jar. There's a little bit of liquid down in there. That's why I keep shaking it to try to get it coated on the dog food really good. When I let it cool out completely, I'll put it like this. That way you don't have it stuck to the bottom. It'll be stuck to the lid and it'll be easier to come out. Is this the part where the camera guy gets to eat the bacon? Yep. You can just reach right in and eat the bacon. Mm, okay. I'm really glad I could participate in this one. Oh, it's super crunchy. I like it this way. Oh wow, that's the most dangerous snack I've ever tasted. What? That's the most dangerous snack I've ever tasted. <laughs> dangerous because you eat it all? This is the best part about doing videos for YouTube. What do you think our YouTube viewers really want to see when it comes to videos? Um, I mean, some of our most popular are definitely the hawk rescues. Anytime there's a chance of you getting footed or bit, I feel is rather interesting to people. I'm not opposed to bleeding for other people's entertainment. Yeah, we appreciate that too. Well, you know, it's one of those things where, it, you know, it sounds so scary. The human body heals so fast, you know, so it's like, I don't mind, you know. And if we get some stitches, that's good content too. Like, let's just do a little clip it here and like down in the comments. Yeah, I'd say down in the comments. What do you like the very best? Or if you could see Michael do anything, what would it be? Yeah, if you could see me do anything, what would it be? I love the guy at the warehouse the other day called you Michael Irwin. I know, he did. I'm part. Of, I'm officially part of the Irwin family now. <laughs> he did call me Michael Irwin. Yeah. Um, we will take him to the World Bird Sanctuary, but she's not. She's in really good shape, so we're just going to turn her loose. Michael Irwin. <laughs> it took me aback, too, for a second. I was like, wait, that's not my life. Oh, oh, I see what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> I've been making this bait since I was about eight or nine years old. On our farm, we rendered out pig fat on the regular. And I would mix the pig fat with either pig food, pellet food, or dog food. And I would use it on my trap line. So for 40 years, I've been using this method. And it works without fail. 100% of the time. Especially in our urban environments. Thank you for watching. Appreciate another episode of Wildlife Command Center. And make sure when you turn that bell notification on, click notify all. That way, every time we upload a new video on Wednesday or Saturday, you will be notified immediately.